it's a weird it's a weird thing to lose your hearing because when you first tell somebody you're losing your hearing they're just like oh okay but it's a non-visual disability so I could walk down the street or walk around a grocery store and no one would know so I felt very alone like constantly living a lie in this hearing world and not being able to adjust to it properly. Devastated is, is putting it lightly, I think. I, I lost myself completely. I started keeping a journal of all the different sounds and what they sounded like. I remember clapping so hard that I would bruise my bones just trying to get the sound to come and it just never, it never happened and, and then I, I just gave up. I think, I think what I miss the most is actually the smaller things, less, less than the music. I, I miss hearing people speak. I, I miss the sound of my dad's voice and my husband, I've never actually heard what he sounds like, and when I have kids in the future, I'll never get to hear them cry or, or say, Mommy, I love you, or, you know, I can see it and it's there, but that's the stuff that I, I feel like I'm missing out on more so than, than the music, because music is what I want it to be, and it's in my head, so I moved back home, I stopped doing music for a year, and started playing guitar with my dad because that was our way to communicate through hard times and he had just lost his father so we were mourning together and he asked me to learn a new song for him and I thought that was dumb but I'm not gonna say no to my dad <laughs> it's a bad decision um, so I did and, and I was playing it and he's like you should learn the, the music to it you should sing it and I rolled my eyes and I gave it a good college try and sang. I thought it was going to be horrible. I, I didn't. I just closed my eyes and I just sang it and I just hoped that it was audible and didn't explode his head or anything. And um, he started crying and, and I kind of turned and looked at him. I was like, it's that bad, isn't it? And he's like, no. Oh. It, it was right on pitch the whole time. And so that was kind of a eureka moment when the old childhood perfect pitch blended with my muscle memory and so um, from there the possibilities just started opening and I found myself again. <laughs> For staying with the band, it's all based off of vibrations and touch. So I started performing with my shoes off because through the floor, you can feel the bass and the drums. And I would always stay really close to the piano. Um, when I first started singing, I had my hand clutched to it for dear life. And you could feel the piano tempo. And then I would look at the pianist and he would knock me in for when I would come back in. and. And then as I've gotten more comfortable with it and my band has gotten to know me more and we know where we're going, I've released my clutch of the piano. You can feel the bass more through your chest. And if you have a horn section, because it's a higher register, you can actually feel it on your arms. It's really bizarre. So I've kind of designated different body parts for different instruments and then I watch. It's made me a little bit of a better vocalist just in the fact that I'm not scared anymore. I used to be petrified. Then when I stood up there, I had this wash over me that, well, who's gonna care? You know, they're not gonna boo me. And if they do, I can just close my eyes and then it'll just be as if it never happened. Every once in a while, you know, someone will say, oh, well, you know, you should, market yourself as, as that deaf singer. And it's like, well, oh, I want people to like my music for what it is. You know, I didn't expect people to show up to my concerts because of a wacky, weird hook that got them there. You know, I want them to show up and appreciate the music for what it is. And if my story is inspirational to them, awesome.
I think they're the best people in No Barriers. They they do things that blow my mind. Talk about inspirational. I feel like a dork. <laughs> you know, I'm walking and I'm just like, oh, oh he climbs mountains. Oh, that guy is way stronger than me. I feel I just feel inadequate. And so I I uh, started doing a lot of research before I went to the summit because so I was like, well, you know, I really want to know what I'm getting involved in. And every Everything I kept reading was over and over. This is the kind of stuff that I've always loved. You're you're taking the skills that you do have, the things that you um, are working with, and you're implementing them to make the world a better place. It's like, how could you not want to be involved in a company who pushes people to be past what they think is good enough? And they take small little things and they make it into something beautiful and so ever since going to the summit I, was, I just I fell in love